Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. It's a cold, frosty morning here in central Missouri. And I wanted to uh, remind everyone we're going to be having that South Pole bread heifer sale tonight on our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. There's 21 of them. And uh, this is the largest group of bread heifers that we've ever uh, put on our auction. They're located in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, had a lot of people asking, well, do we have trucking available? We do. We've got a fellow that hauls for us. And uh, so that's not an issue. But folks, they are unbelievably nice heifers. Um, these came out of our herd. These are some of our bulls, by the way. I'm out here moving the bulls on some winter stockpile. It's got fescue right here. There's, there's a little bit of foxtail in there. The bulls are just tearing it up, getting the candy. I wanted to show you all something. So uh, this is what we're leaving. So I'm, I put in a back fence right here. This is my lane all the way down that hill quarter mile back to the water so they're not being able to go on what they were yesterday which is this little strip right here so from that blue post over to that yellow post and about 200 feet long they're in here for 24 hours folks look at the forage i got left so the reason i'm locking them off of here is i don't want them walking on this for another 24 hours and uh, we can come back here. So this is November 1st. I'll be back here around uh, New Year's Eve, around the 1st of January. So in another, uh, you know, 60 days, this will have time to get snowed on, rained on, cold weather, and it'll be cleaned up. <laughs> There's a bull over there bellowing. What is that sound? Anyway, I want, you know, people that are uh, tired of losing money in their beef cattle operation, folks, it all comes down to animals that can make a living on the grass on your farm without feeding them supplements. It's pretty darn straightforward. Look at the condition on these cows. I mean, they look good. I mean, they got, all got good hair coats, they're fat. It looks like some of them look like you've been feeding them grain. I mean, they're just plump. And they do that on 100% forage. Now, it's not that difficult if you do math. I mean, I'm going to run you all through a math equation real quick. So, you got three 1,000 pound cows, and then you got two 1,500 pound cows. They both groups eat the same amount of forage. It's just based on weight. 3% of the body weight. Okay. So I've got three 1,000 pound cows and the other fellow, I'm going to give my neighbor over. He's got two 1,500 pound cows. Well, those 1,500 pound cows are going to give you two calves. The three 1,000 pound cows, you're going to get three calves. So when you go to sell them at the sale barn, you're gonna have one more calf to sell. And there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference in the weight. There's gonna be a little. I mean, the bigger cow will give you, let's say another 80, 100 pound, maybe, maybe. I had a guy tell me it wouldn't be that much. It'd be more like 50 pound bigger calf, whatever. The bigger calves, when you go to sell them, bring less per pound. So let's just say the 1500 pound cow weaned off a 600 pound calf and the thousand pound cows weaned off a 450 pound calf i promise you that 450 pound calf will always bring more per pound than the 600 pound calf will it's just the way it is lighter weight calves always bring more per pound so i've got one more calf to sell and i get more per pound and folks for every hundred pounds that you increase every hundred pounds you increase your cow weight over a thousand, you lose 2% fertility. So if you go from 1500 pounds from a thousand, that's five, take that times two, that's 10. So you got 10% of your cows are not gonna breed just cause you got them too darn big. 
That'll break you. Take a big old cow through the winter, she eats you out of house and home, and then you find out that she doesn't even have a calf in her. You should have preg checked them. But anyway, uh, those big cows, you know, it's wet out here. We've been getting some rain, finally. It's a little bit too late to grow any grass, but I'm not gonna complain. We got some rain and the ground's soft. It's not this morning, it's froze, but you took, you take a 1500 pound cow and you put them on this winter stock pile and you're getting rain, your whole farm's gonna look like a feedlot. They're gonna punch it and you're gonna have big old sunken spots where they walked. But we call those pug marks and you're gonna be growing a really good crop of uh, ragweed there the next year. Everywhere you punch your, your sod, and punch this out, you're gonna have ragweed growing there. So you need to have a feedlot. You gotta put them up in the winter and put them in a nasty old feedlot and feed them hay all winter. Uh-uh, I ain't doing that. I can do this, because these calves right here, these are be two-year-old bulls. They're up there about 800 pounds now. And uh, between seven, some are maybe nine, the older ones, there's a couple coming three-year-olds in here as well. But they don't pug my pastures. I mean, you're leasing land, you don't want muddy spots as you're rotating around your farm. You don't want to leave mud spots all over. It's a good way to get kicked off of a lease. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> it's just, I have people argue with me. I had a guy in Canada argue with me. He had, he had 1,800-pound cows. And he sat there and told me his 1,800-pound cows didn't need a bite more than a 1,000-pound cow did. And I'm like, you know, you, you can't argue with somebody like that. You just, okay, well, I'm glad they do. I'm glad you're making a lot of money and just keep doing what you're doing. Because, you know, he wanted to fight and argue, and I wasn't going to do it. Uh, that's ridiculous. You know, just do the math, folks. Just do the math. And uh, it's just weight. It comes down to weight. And uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll always, always, always take a thousand pound cow over a 1500 pound cow every single day of the week because i did it i did it that's what i started out with was those great big old monsters dang they went broke dang they went broke i finally got smart and figured it out it's not the weight that makes you the money okay it's the breed back it's not tearing up your pastures being you know, the winter more animal than the same amount of land you got another calf to sell at the end of the year. That's where the money's at. It's profit per acre, not profit per head. Okay. All right. I'll get, I'm going to climb down off my horse. Sorry I got carried away there. But if you're interested in some really nice heifers, you're not going to find a, big, a bigger group in the whole United States than this. And there's 21 of them. You talk about a starter herd. My God. If I had the grass, I'd buy the darn things myself. I just don't. We're stocked appropriately for the winter. And uh, if I brought in more animals right now, I'd have to go buy some more hay. But uh, they are a wonderful set. They're going to be auctioned off tonight. Greenpasturesfarm.net on that website. And uh, we'll probably see some of you all there tonight. Take care. Have a good one.